At 9.30 a.m. on Tuesday, October the 19th, 2021, the first Bitcoin ETF began trading on the New York Stock Exchange. Within 30 minutes, the ProShares Bitcoin Futures ETF saw over $250 million in trading volume. When the markets closed, it was $10 million short of hitting $1 billion in daily trading volume. This nearly broke the trading volume record for any ETF on its first day. All this action makes it easy to forget that there are still 20 pending Bitcoin ETF applications. And unlike the current ETF, some of the pending physically backed ETFs could send BTC to six figures and beyond. So today I'm going to explain what an ETF is, I'll differentiate between the different types of Bitcoin ETFs, speculate when we could finally see a physically backed Bitcoin ETF, and see how high BTC could go once that ETF lists. Before we get ready to rumble, there's a disclaimer I need to unbundle. Nothing in this video is financial advice of any kind. Education and entertainment are the only things you'll find. If this is your first time in the audience, my name is Guy and the name of the channel should make things obvious. The Coin Bureau is ground zero for the highest quality content about crypto. Coins, tokens, news, reviews and dozens of other topics for you to peruse. If this kind of content suits your mood, you might as well subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell too. You've got nothing to lose. Well, technically this video does cost you minutes, but you'll see that it was worth it if you watch till the finish. I know that not everyone has the time for this, which is why I've left timestamps below that you can use to skip. So, now that you're ready and set, let's go check out these Bitcoin ETFs. First things first, what the hell is an ETF? ETF is short for Exchange Traded Fund. Exchange traded funds are sort of like stocks, except they don't represent a share in any company. Instead, an ETF tracks the price of an asset. As a simple example, a gold ETF will track the price of gold. Now, the benefit of a gold ETF is that it lets you trade gold without having to physically hold the gold yourself. If this gold ETF is physically backed, the company which created the ETF will hold that gold on your behalf and create and redeem its gold ETF shares based on demand. So, assuming this gold ETF tracks the price of one ounce of gold, for every ETF share you buy, the company will have to buy one ounce of physical gold behind the scenes. And for every ETF share you sell, the company will have to sell one ounce of physical gold behind the scenes. Now, typically, this buying and selling happens at the end of the trading day, but it all depends on how the ETF is structured. ETFs can get pretty complicated, and this is mostly because they don't always track just one asset. As a simple example, you could have a precious metals ETF that tracks the price of both gold and silver. You could even have an ETF that tracks gold, silver and Tesla stock, where the holders of the ETF are given shareholder rights for the Tesla stock, meaning they can have a say in how Tesla is run. Because ETFs are a type of security, they are regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission or SEC, and any company that wants to issue an ETF must get approval from the SEC before listing it on a stock exchange. The ProShares Bitcoin Futures ETF that began trading this week tracks Bitcoin futures on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, or CME. For those unfamiliar, futures are basically an agreement to buy an asset later at a predetermined price. If you believe the asset will be worth more in the future, that's called going long. If you believe the asset will be worth less in the future, it's called going short. If you use leverage, that's called getting wrecked. You know who you are. Now anyways, the Bitcoin futures trading on the CME are very different from the ones we see on cryptocurrency exchanges. This is because the CME Bitcoin futures are settled in dollars, whereas the futures we see on crypto exchanges are settled in BTC or USDT. As a result, the ProShares Bitcoin Futures ETF has no direct effect on the price of BTC. And if you're having a hard time understanding why, consider the following. Suppose you go and blow a billion dollars on the ProShares Bitcoin Futures ETF. When you do this, ProShares has to go to the CME and buy a billion dollars in Bitcoin futures contracts on your behalf 
and give you ETF shares representing the Bitcoin futures contracts you just purchased. Because CME's Bitcoin futures contracts are backed by cash, there is no buying pressure going on for BTC, just for the Bitcoin futures contracts, which are basically just pieces of paper with numbers on them. Now, all this does is create a huge discrepancy between the Bitcoin futures prices on the CME and other futures exchanges that list BTC, which hedge funds like because they can make profits from the difference. <laughs> it's called arbitrage, old chap. <laughs> now, anywho, if the ProShares Bitcoin futures ETF tracked the price of Bitcoin futures on a cryptocurrency exchange, buying a billion dollars of their ETF means ProShares would have to go to that cryptocurrency exchange and buy actual BTC, assuming that's the asset used for futures contracts there. This would have a direct effect on the price of BTC because ProShares is buying actual BTC, not just pieces of paper with numbers on them. Now, I know what you're thinking, but Guy, BTC has gone up ever since the ProShares Bitcoin Futures ETF started trading. And yes, I am well aware of that. The thing is that this price action is being driven primarily by the hype around the listing of a Bitcoin Futures ETF, which has been building for weeks. Another part of why BTC's price continues to rise has to do with the validation the Bitcoin futures listing gives to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency as an asset class. For a long time, institutions believed cryptocurrency was nothing more than magic internet money. But this sentiment has done a hard 180 over the last year. Multiple pro-crypto reports have been published by banks and asset managers alike. And it's not just hot air either. The ProShares ETF was the second most traded stock by Fidelity's clients. To put things into perspective, Fidelity's clients have over $11 trillion in assets. The listing of a Bitcoin futures ETF is the watershed moment that opens the door to what everyone is waiting for. And that is a physically backed Bitcoin ETF. As the name suggests, a physically backed or spot Bitcoin ETF tracks the actual price of BTC, not the price of paper contracts on a futures exchange. If you were to blow a billion dollars on a spot Bitcoin ETF, the company providing that ETF would have to go to a cryptocurrency exchange and buy one billion dollars of physical BTC. Now, logically, this would have a direct effect on the price of BTC. But again, I know what you're thinking. Guy, don't we have this already with Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust? Well, yes and no. As I mentioned in my March video about Bitcoin ETFs, even though Grayscale holds BTC, Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust doesn't actually track the price of BTC, at least not to a T. This is because trusts can only create and redeem shares after confirming the change with the SEC, whereas ETF shares are created and redeemed at the end of each day when companies settle the holdings of the assets backing their ETFs. As such, shares of Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust have a tendency to trade significantly above or below their worth relative to the physical BTC held by Grayscale, which backs them. This is obviously not ideal if you want to invest in BTC indirectly, which is what institutions have to do since they can't hold physical BTC. Conversely, creating and redeeming spot ETF shares ensures the shares track the price of the BTC backing them as closely as possible. This is obviously ideal if you're investing in BTC indirectly, which is again what institutions have to do because they can't hold physical BTC themselves. Now, this brings me to the most important difference between a spot Bitcoin ETF and Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust. And that's that almost every institution is allowed to invest in ETFs, but not every institution is allowed to invest in a trust. This is simply because ETFs are more regulated than trusts, and it's why the listing of the ProShares Bitcoin Futures ETF is so significant. It allows almost every institution to invest in BTC indirectly, albeit in a less than optimal manner for the reasons I just mentioned. Now, you can get my full take on why futures-backed Bitcoin ETFs suck by watching my video about that. And that is up there in the top right. Given that a physically backed Bitcoin ETF is significantly superior to a futures backed Bitcoin ETF, this begs the question of why we haven't seen a spot Bitcoin ETF yet, especially since there are around 12 such applications that have been sitting at the SEC for months now. 
SEC Chairman Gary Gensler was asked about this on CNBC moments after the ProShares Bitcoin Futures ETF started trading. Gary specified that the reason why the SEC only approved a futures-backed Bitcoin ETF is because the Bitcoin futures on the CME are regulated by the CFTC and have been for four years. Put differently, the reason why the SEC hasn't yet approved a physically-backed Bitcoin ETF is because of a lack of regulations, specifically around cryptocurrency custody. I say this because Gary said this in his infamous speech at the Aspen Security Conference in August. Quote, The SEC is seeking comment on crypto custody arrangements by broker-dealers and relating to investment advisors. Custody protections are key to preventing theft of investor assets, and we will be looking to maximize regulatory protections in this area. Now, if you've been keeping up with the channel, you'll know that this is something I've mentioned many times before. And my personal theory is that the SEC is waiting for banks to finish building their crypto custody services before approving a spot Bitcoin ETF. This is obviously because there is no third party crypto custodian more trustworthy than a bank, right? Now, anyways, I'm quite certain that custody regulations aren't the only thing the SEC is waiting for. Gary has said many times that the crypto market is highly volatile and speculative. I reckon it's reasonable to assume that he and the SEC want to see just how volatile and speculative Bitcoin could get using a futures-backed Bitcoin ETF as a measuring stick. Here's what I mean by that. As I mentioned at the start of the video, the ProShares Bitcoin ETF saw over $1 billion in trading volume on its first day. Again, this has no direct effect on BTC because all that's being bought is CME futures. However, if that same amount of capital were to be injected into a spot Bitcoin ETF on its first day of trading, the physical purchase of BTC would create insane upside volatility for BTC. This is probably just one of the many metrics the SEC is examining, and I'm sure the others include things like which institutions are investing the most, how much capital those institutions have, and so on. Once the SEC is happy with the data it's collected, this data, along with increased regulations around cryptocurrency custody, should be everything it needs to approve a spot Bitcoin ETF. And so now for the big question, when could we realistically see a spot Bitcoin ETF listing? Well, as I mentioned earlier, there are currently about a dozen applications for one sitting at the SEC. The SEC recently decided to extend its decision time for three of these, and this suggests they have a shot of getting approved. These are Cryptoins Bitcoin ETF, GlobalX's Bitcoin Trust, which is actually an ETF, and the Wisdom Tree Bitcoin Trust. As for what's going on with the other nine, it's not entirely clear at this time. So starting with Cryptoin, I have doubts that the SEC will approve its Bitcoin ETF application. This is because Cryptoin doesn't appear to have any previous experience listing ETFs, and its whole shtick is to successfully file four cryptocurrency ETFs with the SEC. In case you missed the memo, the SEC isn't too keen on cryptocurrency, so it wouldn't surprise me if that bias gets the best of it. There's no shortage of bias in Cryptoin's case either, because Cryptoin first filed this particular ETF back in October 2019 and refiled in April this year after its first filing was rejected by the SEC. The extension of Cryptoin's decision deadline to December the 24th is certainly promising, but it looks like Global X has a better shot at getting a spot Bitcoin ETF past the SEC. This is because Global X has successfully filed for nearly 90 ETFs and custodies over $40 billion in assets for them. This proven track record is the kind of security that the SEC is looking for. Now, the SEC is set to decide on the Global X Bitcoin Trust by November the 21st, so we will know around that time whether it managed to make the cut. If you ask me, though, my money is on Wisdom Tree. Besides the fact that Wisdom Tree also has dozens of ETFs and custodies over $75 billion of assets for them, Wisdom Tree's Bitcoin Trust is currently the only spot Bitcoin ETF with an assigned stock exchange ticker, as revealed in the Bank of America report. Now, this is a small but significant detail because the Bloomberg analyst who predicted the Bitcoin futures ETF listing partially based his prediction on the fact that some Bitcoin futures ETFs 
had received a ticker symbol. If you apply that same reasoning to Wisdom Tree, it sounds like it will be the first to get the SEC's blessing for a spot Bitcoin ETF. In terms of timeline, we're looking at a decision date of December the 11th. Between now and then, however, we could see an approval from another contender, and that's good old Grayscale. Now, Grayscale has been hinting for months that it wanted to file for a Bitcoin ETF of some kind. And this week, it officially announced that it's looking to convert its Grayscale Bitcoin Trust into an ETF. In contrast to the other companies on this list, Grayscale has been a custodian of billions of dollars in BTC and other cryptocurrencies in a stock market setting since 2013. The only obstacle standing in Grayscale's path to a spot Bitcoin ETF is the current holders of GBTC, who may not be on board with the conversion process, assuming it's approved by the SEC. This leaves one last question, and that's how high BTC could go once a physically backed Bitcoin ETF begins trading on a US stock market. While there's obviously no way of knowing for sure, we actually have enough information to make an educated guess. As some of you will know, a physically backed Bitcoin ETF already exists in Canada. The purpose Bitcoin ETF listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange in February this year. This is around nine months, but let's say it's a year just to keep things simple. Since that time, the purpose Bitcoin ETF accumulated over 1.4 billion US dollars in BTC. Let's trim off 400 million on the assumption that some of that money is coming from overseas, specifically the United States. Canada has a GDP of roughly 1.6 trillion USD. Let's round that up to 2 trillion USD just to make the next calculation even more conservative. The United States has a GDP of 20 trillion USD. Assuming we see the same proportion of investment into a physically backed Bitcoin ETF in the United States as in Canada, this means it would attract a bare minimum of $20 billion of investment in its first year. Assuming most of this investment happens shortly after the spot Bitcoin ETF lists the way it did in Canada and in the United States with the ProShares Bitcoin Futures ETF, I reckon it's reasonable to assume that at least $5 billion would be injected into BTC in the first week or two of a spot Bitcoin ETF listing. Given that the average market depth for BTC is between $20 and $40 million on any given day, my mental math suggests BTC could double in the first week after a spot Bitcoin ETF is listed. Note that this projection is based on current market conditions, and it also assumes that the buying demand for BTC from a spot ETF will be big enough to bleed out of the -the over-the-counter trades where most of the buying and selling would be happening. Now, I'll also reiterate that this is an extremely conservative estimate. Inflows into a spot Bitcoin ETF would probably be $5 billion on the first day just from fidelity alone. One thing is for sure, though. When a spot Bitcoin ETF is listed, it will almost certainly mark the top of the current bull market the same way the launch of the CME Bitcoin futures did back in 2017. Luckily, you've got a lot of time to prepare for that blow off top, and you can use my video about how to spot the top to help you perform the perfect exit. And that's up there in the top right. Well, that's all I've got to say about Bitcoin ETFs for today. So, if you learn something new, hitting that like button is the right thing to do. Be sure to subscribe to the channel too and ping that notification bell so you get a heads up when the next video hits the tube. Until that time, there are plenty of things for you to do. Check out Coin Bureau clips for behind the scenes and follow me on Twitter, TikTok and Instagram for hot takes and dank memes. Join my Telegram channel for daily crypto updates and subscribe to my weekly newsletter to get the tools, tips and tricks you need to set your portfolio straight. And if you've got some extra cash to blow, consider supporting the channel by getting a tee, sweater, or beanie from the Coin Bureau merch store. You can find all of this and more using the links in the description down below. If you've made it this far, you're the best. Thank you so much for watching. I'm off to get some rest. I'll see you soon, folks.